It's the bees we're starting with, Lou. It is the bees. Now, the bees, when I got the bees stamped, all I could see was, pa I love pattern building. I, it's just a great way to stamp and stamp and stamp sort of thing. So when I actually saw the bees, I actually created this pattern and I could create a multiple wallpaper I was say, yeah, with wallpaper -esque, it. Isn't it. It very much so. And I've done it on cream, so it can look completely different if I'd have done this on white. Yep. It would have taken on a slightly more modern vibe with it. But I've gone very antique. But you've got all the smaller elements. So suddenly that would fit in, that's an A4, A4 you know, art journal page. And all I've done is just multi-stamping and then I've been used the silhouette stamps we've got to actually add my colour. Well, yeah, the silhouette's really subtle, isn't it? In this very one? much subtle, yeah. And and then you've got your colour straight away because you can be as bold. So I wanted to take this as inspiration to actually make a card because not everybody wants to do an A4 piece. I do, but not everybody else does. So I thought what we'd do is a couple of really quick ideas with these. So I'm taking the from the B and I'm going to take the, the one that's actually got the B image mm -hmm. itself in here and I'm just going to make sure I've inked it all up, you know, properly, she says, yeah. <laughs> you know, properly. So I want to take the B. Now, if you want to be precise, you can measure it. I'm dreadful for doing it by eye and just it, uh, straight in. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you could sit here and work out it's a square. I've gone for a square, so you could easily do it straight away. So we've got the B image there. And I've got that beautiful B, and we've got all the detailing it's on really there. It's really fine. It is, isn't, isn't it? it? It's Sunday. really detailed. And then what I thought we would do is I want to build up the pattern, but I just want to have one, the B, to be the main focal point in this pattern. So as we've got two of those shapes, I thought we'll use the second shape just to build up the pattern around, but then that creates something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is we've got little tendrils and all Ooh, I'm yeah. doing is I'm just overlapping the tendrils to make it look like that was the plan and you know they all become as one. Sounds like it should be a song shouldn't it? As one feels like yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got mm -hmm. that there so we've got that built up like so and I'm just going to do exactly the same again. I feel this is so inviting. At home what have you got? Have you got crayons? Is it waxes? Are you thinking about your alcohol markers or your, your mm. blending inks is it going to be your watercolor element you're absolutely right for all of those everything works and then there's a little bit that to suit all styles of crafting now at the top here is a little dot tiniest little dot and i i'm using that as my registration to line up now if it doesn't work a hundred percent it but it just gives me a visual clue of where the next one should actually be so we're just going to keep building this up so very quickly so i'm I'm just going to fill this area up here. So now all of a sudden, I'm just hoping now I don't have enough ink on there. Um, so now all of a sudden we've got a whole pattern. And this is on a five and a half by five and a half. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to build this up here. Take a little bit more time with your stamping, but so very quickly, we've now got a completely repeated pattern, and the B now is in the, the centre, yeah. and which is what I wanted it to be—the real focal point at the end of the day. So now, what I've done, I've taken the, one of the smaller decorative stamps, and I've started to fill in the gaps that we've got here. Now, I could actually just use that beautiful solid stamp and add colour, but I just thought it was nice to fill these in, and I'm just again using that little dot that we had there, and just lining it up because the artwork is very fluid it doesn't matter if anything overlaps because it looks like it's meant to be that okay. way um, and I think that takes a lot of pressure off you know us as stampers about it's got to be perfectly in that spot at that that right place because yeah. um, I think sometimes we put ourselves gives ourselves too much pressure sometimes right so let's put the lid on there because I will put my hand in it mm -hmm. So now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of colour and I'm going to use uh, the inks which I believe are on the website but I want to bring in some of the stardust. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of the inks on here. We were doing this for the app weren't yes. we? Uh, so I'm going to put a little bit of ink on a blending foam but I want this one now to be a little bit subtler so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I'm just doing it away from the electrics. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I have to look because normally it's that Good side. Spot. Yeah, it yeah. is all back to front in this set. So, right, I want this now to be a little bit subtler, so I've knocked back a little bit of the colour. And I'm going to take the solid stamp and we're just going to add 
and I'm not going for a hundred if I do it on that white bit there you can see probably a little bit more about what I'm doing I don't want it to be a hundred percent perfect I just want it to add a tiny little bit of color so all I'm doing is lining up and putting that inside so that now will give me the subtlest little bit of color because when I put the solid colour down, I want the solid colour to be about the main B image, not about my background. So I want my background to be just that. We were kind of dispelling the myth, weren't we, of like um, silhouettes yep. have to be black, like full, solid silhouette. And of course they are. Yeah. But in here, you, I think you used to describe it as like mottled or is that... Yeah, like, mottled, yeah. And you can, so take, because I'm using it with the inks like this, suddenly I've taken the pressure away from myself about making it perfect. I'm not, um, I'm using a sponge, so I'm not making sure that the ink has gone on you know, mm -hmm. all in the right place. I'm just keep going until the ink runs out and I can then build up the background. So now this one, because the, the card I've finished, I've done it in a completely different way. Ah. I, no, because I wanted to show lots of different ways of doing things. So we've got this and I've just built up the pattern here now. So we've got that there. So what I want to do is I want to take the inks again. Okay. And I'm going to take the ink, but this time I w I'm not going to... Um, spritz it down to make it lighter. I want this one to be a little bit bolder. I'm just going to put the lid there. And I've got some of the Stardust. Because it's a mica powder and it's pure pigment, it can be added Look to anything. I mean, it absolutely sparkles. Oh. Um, add it to water, paint with it as it is. So as you can see, I add the water in it and into the lid and it still sparkles so I can make a, um, a mica solid paint because it's yep. opaque. I can then add it to my texture paste and you can change the way it looks again. Add it to a clear, um, add it to something like a gesso, which is more of a matte finish and suddenly you turn a matte into a sparkle, which changes it. So all I've done is I've added a little bit of mica on there. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of water and we'll see how strong this color is in a minute. And I'm gonna take the same stamp. So what I've now done, well, if I put it on there, Ooh. That's um, do you want me to put it on the? I can put it on top of it. Fizzing on there. Can you see it fizzing? If I pass, if I do a bit, I'll get you to do the telly wiggle when you can. Oh then. gosh, the old, the old telly wiggle. I'm just going to yeah. hold it still. <laughs> Where should I go? Here we go. It's going to run off, but that's fine. Okay, but can you see it fizzing with the mica now mixed with the ink? So I've now made my ink a mica-based ink. Wow, there you go. But the more you put in, obviously, uh, the more intensity yeah. you've got of the mica. So. Now this time round, as last time I, I spritzed quite heavily to create a subtle yellow. Okay. This time I want this one to be, even though it's mottled, I want it to be um, a little bit more in your face. In your food. You know, a bit jazz handsy. <laughs> I feel you know, like you, know, you, know, you go. I feel like a stamp set soon from you will be called in your face. In your face. <laughs> right. So. So this one, I'm really am. I'm not going for 100% perfect, but I do want as much of that ink and mica down as possible. So now I've got a different change. So now this yeah. has become all mica. I'm trying to see if I can sh show it, but it's become suddenly a little bit different. I'm not as good as the telly wiggle as you are, the but it's it is there. You can we'll actually we'll see. It. We can see it. So what I then thought we can do is I'm just going to see. There's still loads on here. You there's see. Tons. So what we're going to do is we, we can now, you could make that intense by doing, um, you know, more and more. But I've got the pattern there. So what I thought is rather than use this B, I want to actually put this B on the top. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take what ink was left on that sponge. So this is a separate stamp in there, In, in the it? same yeah. set. Yeah. So I'm just going to use up the ink. So all I've done is dabbed out that ink on that sponge and there's loads of it left. And I'm just going to water this down and do... the wings subtly and we keep going there we go and we'll just that's going to I'm just going to put that to one side and dry and then what I want to do is because I've still got a lot I've got this other little stamp that's a silhouette and I'm going to go for the smaller one okay I've changed my mind okay you know you, you go, you, I've changed my mind and I'm just going to pick up some of this little bit of mica because I've still got it on here and I'm just using it to color in these little ones here And they're now going to be coloured, because you can colour them in individually if you want to, but the silhouette stamp is there, so we might as well make yeah. the most of it. <laughs> no, quickly. You know, that's how I, you know, sit there. 
we could carry on building the pattern here. I could carry on stamping. I'll just show you what I'm Yeah, that could fade away. It, it could, could be, be yeah, that could be actually really geometric, couldn't it? If you I want could it to put be. one there, and then I could put one up here. You know, and you could carry on building your pattern and filling that area with those patterns. Oh, excuse me. I thought I was going to sneeze. Got away with it. So we've got that there. So what I would then do is take a micron pen. I've got a brown one and I would fill in all those different images. And then your B would sit on the top and we've got a beautiful sentiment which says you're the B's knees. Mm -hmm. And that would sit there like so. So is I that... use the bigger B image on that yellow. So we've got that pattern, but if we then decided that we wanted to do exactly the same, I've now, this time round, I've done it and I've put the yellow, but I've put the yellow block in absolutely every single one. And where I've done this part here, I've repeated it into those three corners, put the large B back on again and the sentiment and the same let's grab this i knew i did it twice yep and the sentiment and the, it's just the same layout but by adding color everywhere else it actually looks completely different very clever but, but. you could then go even further i i won't demo this one because i want to do the hair next yes however i've done exactly the same design but this time why does it have to be yellow why not pink how fun you know, yep. so it do doesn't have to be yellow. But what I did then was I stamped um, the shape out again, did the blue, and then that's going to sit there on 3D foam. But I can now bring in the smaller B, because don't forget we've got those little wings, extra wings you yes, could you add. Yes, you do. Good point. So that could sit there, but you could take the larger B again in yellow on the pink, and he stands out, and it looks completely different, blended, and put yeah. the two smaller Bs that could be down here again with the same sentiment so just by it looks completely different again even though it's the same pattern i've just elongated it you can you know and change the color you can get so much from it you know it could be blue it could be green it could you know yeah. you know so go from square to dl to completely different or completely <laughs> well let's go back to where yeah. the whole journey started you know that could easily be a swatch from a such high-end wallpaper or a poster or something like that that could be imagine that on the front of a, a one of your journals yeah completely ah, beautiful and you know it, it, it with and if we just put i mean that there i mean you've just got a ah, simple yep, yep. i could just do the center one there and you've got that completely you could you know put maybe cut this out in cream and make it stand out but you can change it the way but also this is done on cream but just choosing a different substrate to work on and white they look completely different patterns that bee could be in the hands after it, all, couldn't it? It could, it could be, be next to the hair. Yep, the shape, absolutely everything. Mm -hmm.